FemVid's Ultimo, your guide to what's happening in the last month for Feminine Pacific. I'm Alicia Evans. And I'm Sharon Rawls. First, to the July events. Marimoto and Hannah Hicks attended a short networking and mapping event for disabled people's associations and relevant other organisations to examine the current gaps when it comes to gender and disability. Hosted by DFAT, it was an opportunity not only to reflect on the current situation and know what organisations are currently doing, but also a time to reflect on what can be done for persons with disabilities when it comes to inclusion, accessibility and equality. July also saw the launch of a toolkit by UN Women to help organisations and groups design and execute projects to address and eliminate violence against women and girls. The toolkit examines all aspects of project design, funding and monitoring and evaluation, adding to the sparse pool of project tools addressing a gaping issue when it comes to ensuring that EVOR projects are effective, resourced and sustainable. A media training was also conducted last month around the issue of sexual orientation and gender identity. A lead up to the launch of the UN's Free and Equal campaign, it was an opportunity to address the glaring issues of reporting issues related to the LGBTIQ community and their general representation in media spaces. There was also a half-day consultation conducted around the theme of youth and sustainable development by the EU. Attending on behalf of Feminine Pacific, it was an interesting space to be in, particularly given thorough and intriguing presentations by various stakeholders. For example, did you know that according to a Fijian Ministry of Health study, only 38% of Fijians of reproductive age use contraception? Well, now you do. Now to the weather. The extended dry spell across Fiji continues. While there was some respite with rain in late July, Leading through to the first few days of August, the effect was only short term and not quite addressing the continued effect, particularly on the agricultural sector. We've heard through some of our networks that given the lack of rain, many communities are seeing their livestock and crops suffer. Additionally, they've had to rely on natural sources of water such as creeks and rivers or boreholes. Women have particularly noted the issue of pollution with these sources, but unfortunately have no alternative. Moving on from weather, we turn to one of the major events for Feminine Pacific Ultimo, our divisional consultations. The three divisional consultations were an opportunity to hear from women in the West, North and Central Divisions, particularly in what they would want to see in the 5 and 20 year national development plans that were under consultation at the time. It was an interesting process, and given that many women are either unable or unaware when it comes to attending the government's national consultations, it was definitely a valuable process to ensure that their views and priorities are documented. Not only will they be compiled into recommendations for the national process, but also the women were interviewed for our Radio with Pictures television series, airing on MyTV, as well as to be available online. Health and infrastructure were hot topics of discussion in all the divisions, with many women sharing frustrations with their realities of underdevelopment, feelings of isolation, and when it comes to the general health care services. We found that in the West, 20 of 50 respondents to a quick survey highlighted health or medical service issues, including one respondent who was concerned about services available for mental health issues. 15 were concerned about water, 9 raised issues about access to land, and 9 were concerned about environmental security, including issues with the Nandi River. 14 wanted road repairs or maintenance, and 7 were concerned about gender equality, including discrimination and the empowerment of women. In the North, we had 40 respondents to our quick survey. 22 were concerned about health services, including 4 that were concerned about transportation specific to health services. 21 were concerned about the quality of roads connecting their communities. 3 were concerned about sea level rise. 8 were concerned about electricity in their community. 7 were concerned about the availability of water. And 8 were concerned about the quality or availability of transportation services. 10 raised the issue of access to education and six wanted improvements or development to their community infrastructure. For the Central Division, we had 21 respondents, with 11 prioritising health, 12 community security and 8 infrastructure. There were also concerns about water, employment, drainage systems and gender equality. It's interesting to note that while, yes, we had 124 women attending across the three divisions, of whom 111 responded to our quick surveys, they weren't just speaking about themselves. They spoke on behalf of 5,200 others. By facilitating the process, it's overwhelming to think that while we were including just one woman, 
she had the ability to engage with not just her concerns, but the concerns of, say, 40 other women in her community, and thus 80 to 200 others in her community alone. But of course, while much of this has been Fiji-centric, Family Pacific's networks extend throughout the Pacific region. We have partners in PNG, Solomon Islands, Bougainville, Tonga and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. We look forward to a number of media initiatives really embracing the Pacific peacemaker in us all. But let's take a quick look at one emerging issue out of Tonga. Vanessa Haleta in Tonga, our regional network member and representative of the Talitha Project, at a recent GPAC CSO forum and subsequent RSG meeting, shared that advocating for CEDAW has been a particularly challenging task. The deeply rooted conservative culture has proven a rich environment for spreading and nurturing misinformation about the convention, preventing public support for its ratification. And she isn't alone. Kalafi Moala wrote about this issue recently, so yes, we aren't insane. You can find the link to his writings in the description below, but here's the gist. Detractors believe that women's place is in the kitchen. Bah humbug gender equality, and everything has been working fine this far. Moala is saying this is an issue, and of course we agree. Thus we must examine and address the issue and the interconnectedness of the bureaucracy, culture, and religion that are affecting and causing this issue. And our work outside of Fiji doesn't stop there. As a member of the post-2015 Women's Coalition, we have been following a lot that has been happening with a discussion around the Sustainable Development Goals. We recently participated in a social media campaign around the intergovernmental negotiations in collaboration with the Women's Major Group. Basically, you can find out updates online and on our Facebook for the specifics, but this IGN was really the last space for input around the final form of the Sustainable Development Goals that will globally guide what development will look like after the MDGs expire in September. We've also been maintaining a focus on the 70th anniversary of the Hiroshima-Nagasaki bombings in partnership with ICANN. There is a lot of positive traction around the issue with more than 100 countries pledging already to work on a legal instrument to ban nuclear weapons as a whole, but that's just the first step. And believe you me, Family Pacific will be watching closely so that it floats your boat. Like us on Facebook for updates. Don't forget, while a lot of what we've talked about can be found on our Facebook page, we also have our community radio station, Femtalk 89 FM. You can tune into our Suva station if you're between Nosori and Navua, and our Lombasa station if you are in a 10 km radius from the town. And if you aren't in any of these places on a regular basis, you can always check our Mixcloud account where all our programs for our community radio stations are podcasted so you can hear women speaking to women for peace wherever you are. So this has been FemVids Ultima. I'm Sean Rolls. And I'm Alicia Evans. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.